Good afternoon, Sanford, and welcome to The Source. Today on The Source, we have our special guest, our favorite person of all time, we always love to have every time, Chief Cecil Eastman. Hey, Sanford, how you doing today? You know, um, we're going to come and do just something just a little bit different. Usually, you know, we talk about the crime stats and things that take place throughout our city, so we thought today we're just going to focus in just on those. As you may not be aware of, we've had an uptick in some of our property crimes throughout our city. And just so that you get an idea, this isn't just something that's happened here in Sanford, it's something that's occurring throughout our entire uh, county. So we're just going to show you some information and just talk to you about some statistical things that have taken place. Usually I'm always just talking and I never really have a card or a cue card, but today I just want to make sure that I stay on track. So as I said before, you know, we've seen some increases in our uh, property crimes that have happened throughout the city. Sure. And so uh, we just want to share some things with you. So over my shoulder, you'll probably see that there will be some different uh, uh, diagrams. The first diagram is going to look at the number of burglaries that we had between uh, May 20th through May 26th that week. You'll see that there's been a little bit of an uptick, but what you'll also get an opportunity to see is where those burglaries took place. The next one is the one that's really important that you need to really focus on. That one looks at uh, burglaries to vehicles or theft from vehicles as they're classified. Just last week, we had 26 vehicles that were broken in. And as you can see from the map, like I said, from behind us, you'll get an opportunity to see how and where those were taking place. Paul, you know what? Do you realize something? That of those 26, how many do you think were unlocked? Jeez, how many could probably... I would think, you know, who leaves their car unlocked? So probably not too many of them. Well, I'm, let's be surprised now. Of those 26, 21 of those vehicles were unlocked. I know this, this, this is just astounding that Every night, just about every day, we put out something to talk about, uh, making sure that you lock your car doors, that you lock your things away so that people don't get it. But when you have 21 of 26 vehicles that were broken into, unlocked, that defeats the purpose. It makes our job much difficult, or a little more difficult, but uh, it also puts a little uneasiness that's out there in our community. So. One of the things that we've seen that's commonly being done is uh, the things that they're taking, they're looking for purses, they're looking for wallets, they're looking for credit cards, they're looking for any of those small items that they can tuck away and then run down the street. As an example, take a look at this video real quick. Amazing when you think of it, this individual is able to go over, check a car door, and you notice the first car that he checks, the doors are locked. But then on the second one, he goes to the door is unlocked. And obviously you can see that this criminal has broken into this car and taken someone's purse and taken someone's possible identity and livelihood because you failed to lock the door. It's simple. When you get out of your vehicle, lock it. If you have things of value in your car, put them in the trunk. Lock it. It's, it's very simple, folks. Sanford, we can defeat a lot of these issues that are taking place just by taking a couple extra simple seconds. Absolutely. You know, we talk about, especially this time of year, checking our back seats to make sure we're not leaving our kids and our dogs in there because it's summertime. And we've known over the past couple of days, it's been in the 90s outside. And the heat index inside of a car can jump up to 150 degrees very quickly. And you can lose a life. But at the same time, Think about it. If you have something in your car that's of value, lock your doors. Hide your items. That helps us in making sure that your community and our community, I should say, remains safe. So Sanford, you know, this is a little bit unusual. I would really, really appreciate it that if you would take that extra couple of seconds and make sure that your vehicles are locked up. And, you know, it's, it's extremely important that you do that. So if we're able to uh, maneuver and get into the communities and try to catch these individuals. Oh, by the way, just before we came in here, what did you tell me about? I think we have some great initiatives. We're in the progress of working to help curb 
some of these incidents of vehicle burglaries. I know we've been in contact with uh, many of our neighborhood watch block captains. Uh, we've got some programs in the work, uh, definitely some concentrated patrol efforts in the areas where we've seen these spikes and these crimes. And in Sanford residents, you might see some electronic messaging boards uh, out through our uh, roadways to help warn about uh, keeping the, uh, your vehicles locked up. So a lot of good stuff in the works, Chief. And I'll tell you, you know, just last night, you know, just before we walked in, there was uh, three young people who were caught, who was uh, charged with prowling and loitering. Yes, sir, that's last right. Last night. So it's not that we're not out there looking to try to catch these individuals, but it would help us to make sure that your things remain safe if you take those extra steps. Lock it up, hide it, make sure that no one is, has the opportunity to make you a victim. We're gonna work with you, we need for you to work with us to make sure that Sanford stays safe. And here again from the source, we just wanna make sure that you know that we're gonna try our best to Keep, Keep it safe, safe Sanford. Sanford.